We're in the middle of go time, implementing switch VLAN changes. By the time we're done here, we will implement the VIA changes for the VIA network switches as we described earlier in the series when we pre-prepared the configurations together. Remember that? Notepad++? Come on over, take a look. Flyby review, we originally backed up all the switch configurations and saved it as switch x original. Then we did a save as with the commands and created the list of commands that we wanted to type in there. Now, this is the list com of commands that rolls out the new VLAN standard that we've been talking about, but also cleans up a lot of the configuration. Like we had this user account on here called cat tools that none of the other switches has. So we might as well delete that as we go. That just comes from doing a good configuration scrub. So now we're going to tell that into these switches. Let me bring up putty. Here we go 10.225.1.240. That's our switch one, port 23. Whoa, big window. We'll shrink that down, log in. There we go, cool. Now, this gets pretty heavy pretty quick because this first command right here is going to go in and eliminate, or actually add the new VLANs and eliminate the old. That's where the network outage begins. Uh, so we're going to paste this in piece by piece because I guarantee you we're going to run into stuff as we go through here that we didn't expect. And we'll have to tweak and tune as we go and get better and better and better just the way things go. So I'll just take this first command, which creates all the VLANs, copy it, global config, and paste. Boom, that was easy. Uh, then we'll go from there, and this is where the outage begins because all the ports are actually assigned to these VLANs. Copy and paste. Oh, VLAN 2 cannot be deleted because it's used as the agreed voice VLAN. Ah, good old Cisco SG300 switches. It, it has a um, voice VLAN that allows you to advertise the VLAN via LLDP or CDP and actually detect the phone. And so it can, it can jump on the right voice VLAN and all that. I don't use it. Uh, it's just in the config. So I think it's um, voice VLAN. Oh, we got to be global config mode. Let's go there. Voice VLAN state and we are going to disable the voice vlan uh, yes that's fine and then now we'll do a no vlan actually let's just hit the up arrow no vlan two through five Ooh. Ooh. i just <laughs> i just seeing that is like <gasps> it just took down the network and it's it's right now it is uh 10 29 in the evening and matter of fact my wife is texting right there how's it going pretty good um, so that's down. Good. Okay. So we've now got that. Uh, let's get this next little section that should fly in. No problem. Let's just do that first interface right there and paste it in. No port. Okay. So interesting. That one is being rejected. No port security. And we'll just hit the enter. There we go. So we'll eliminate that. So update our documentation. Sometimes, uh, switches, if you type the exact command, we'll reject it. So just putting a no in front of it. You just have to take off some of the syntax. So we've now added VLAN 20 and VLAN uh, 40 to our port. We're gonna we're starting to see links flap. That's gonna be as the devices realize they have no network connection, like IP phones. They'll start rebooting themselves. So we're gonna get these little messages going across all along. Now remember, what we're doing is moving these ports to add VLAN 20. It's a trunk port that allows the the multiple VLANs to go across. The phones will use VLAN 20. The things plugged into the phone will use the native VLAN, which is VLAN 40. So let's take this next little chunk of configuration right there. Copy. Paste it in. Dun, 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 dun. Good. And next little chunk of config. And this is what it's like. You're just taking small little chunks. Remember, I always leave it highlighted. So I remember where I left off. Control C, enter, enter, Control V, or paste it in. Right click and putty, just paste it automatically. And so far, so good. What I'm watching for when I'm doing this is the error messages, like we saw earlier. Now I'm going to see things going up and down, up and down, because I'm, I'm, taking them down. So come right here, piece by piece. It's a nice big chunk of ports. Copy, paste that in. Uh, every time it hangs like that, if you've done this before, anytime it hangs, you're like, Ugh, because you think I just lost access to that switch, but we planned this. We shouldn't lose access to the switches. Uh, this should go well. So here we go. This is our last little chunk right here. Paste it in again, since everything is on that VLAN 10, oh, what did I do? Oh, when you highlight in putty, it automatically copies to your clipboard, so it replaced what I had there. Um, VLAN 10 is our management VLAN. We moved our computer there in the first uh, nugget of implementation, so that one should remain unaffected, and, oh, I 
they just lost access. The good news, <laughs> there's some great news right here, uh, is it was at the very end of the configuration. Oh, hang on. Did it come back? Uh, I don't know. I, I may have to, hang on, let's just see. I lost access when I typed that, and it may have just because I did it on the port channel, which is the uplink connecting the switch. Let's just do a quick ping, 10, 225.1.240. The fact that I still see messages coming through, okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. So I, I just lost access to it. Hmm, why? Ah, uh, I just thought of it. I didn't think of this before. We weren't using it native VLAN 777 beforehand. So when I'm on switch one and just accessed it and um, flipped it, it's, I, I had everything using native VLAN 10. So what I did when I switched this, the other side is 10. I just, I just killed the connection. So this is hopefully going to be a temporary thing. Once I configure switch two correctly, then jump over and configure switch three and four correctly, or I get the, the, the two in this uh, side of the building, that should come back up because we should all be on native VLAN 777 and we won't have that awkward bridge. Okay. I'm going with that for now. Let's get telneted in to switch number two. New session, 10.225.1.241, 23, open. And by the way, if, if we have to bail out, I can always walk over to that suite and reboot that switch. Uh, and I can you know, formulate another plan because again, outage window, we haven't saved the config. All of it will go back to the way it was before we did that, which I've done that plenty of times. So I'm into switch number two. Let's jump over here to the commands. And I know we're going to get that same error on the voice VLAN. I didn't update that right here. So let me actually get that out of there and do a voice VLAN state disabled. Copy that. Paste it in right here. The reason I go back and update my other configs is because, again, this acts as a change log for me. Here we go. I'm into switch number two. We'll get in here. And first thing we'll do is disable that voice VLAN. Yes, that's down. We'll make sure all the new VLANs are created. That's good. And we will delete the old VLANs. Oh, come on. Maybe there's another command we have to do here. Voice VLAN ID one, maybe change that. Yeah. And then there we go. Okay. So I, I ripped the voice VLAN out of there because it, it uh, had that command in there as two. We're good. All the old VLANs are down. I still have access to the switch. That's good. All right, let's go through and copy and paste this into here. Good, not seeing any error messages. Link up VLAN 20. Next little chunk, copy, paste. Good, access points configured. Next little chunk right here, copy, paste. Cool. And then the last one, the scary one, where we're changing the native VLAN on the uplink ports and may signal the end of our switch connectivity for right here. Ah, lost it. Lost connection. Ah, I just noticed this. I didn't have VLAN 10 added. I wonder if that, no, that wouldn't replace it. But that should be right there. How did I miss that? Where's my QC? We may have lost that switch. I'm going to walk over to the other suite and reboot that guy. All right, rebooted the switch, and I just got reconnected to it. So I won't, I won't bore you by pasting in all those commands again. Let me, let me um, uh, pause the video, and I'll paste in these commands one more time. And this time, when we get to the end, hopefully we won't lose our connection before it all gets typed in. One thing I want to highlight, something I did different this time around, is I typed in the port channel information before I typed in the GI52. Hang on, let me bring up the network diagram so that I can reorient you and we can work out my theory together. See, this is my network diagram. Now, uh, just to help you get your bearings, uh, I am here. So this this is uh, this is my little switch in my office. 
This is my management PC that's actually sitting on VLAN 10, right? All of these switches have a management IP address in VLAN 10, and that's what I'm telnetting into. This guy is .240, this one's .241. Now, what we noticed is, uh, so the previous version of the config had the trunk ports, all of the uplink ports, with a native VLAN of 10. So when I changed that to 777 over here, I lost connectivity to that switch remotely. Uh, that's probably because this guy is on VLAN 10, this guy is on VLAN 10, which is the native, and so I'm kind of bridging together two VLANs, and no longer is this guy receiving connections here on what it believes to be VLAN 10. It's in VLAN 777. Now on switch two, I kind of changed the order of my configuration to put in the configuration on port channel one first. This is suite 110, switch one to switch two, and I changed the native VLAN over to 777. Back to the diagram, that's right here, 777. That went through okay. As soon as I changed it to 777 here, again, I lost connectivity. And what I'm believing to be true is because my suite where I'm located, this is me, happy me and my computer, uh, is still coming across on VLAN 10 native. When I change the native over here, it's like, okay, that this doesn't reach anything. VLAN 777 is dead. Thus, we're severing our management access until I come over here and change these guys to be in VLAN 777. And what I'm going to do is change this interface first. This one will be in port or VLAN 10 as the native. I'm going to leave that till the very end because I don't want to accidentally sever my access here to one of these switches before I have a chance to restore access uh, to the other side. So I'm thinking by changing these to 777, access will come back up. Otherwise, I'm busting out my console port. So let's go there. I'm going to create a new session to the switches in here. 10.225.1.242 is the first switch, port 23. Ah, uh, failure, request timed out. That's probably because, bring all my chicken scratch back up, spanning tree root is this. Man, I'm putting in some heavy concepts right now. All this so that we can remotely do it instead of going to the console port. This is how lazy we are. So if the spanning tree root is this, this will be the active link and it will block this link. So I'm going to go walk back to the back of the office and unplug port 28, which will unblock this link with spanning tree because this port will no longer be able to reach the spanning tree root. Remember, spanning tree does not see VLANs. It doesn't even know this link is down effectively because we've mismatched the VLANs between the two. It's just saying, hey, this is the best way for this switch right here to reach the root bridge over here. So I'm going to go unplug it and make sure that's not the best way. All right, I'm back. It's unplugged. Let's give it a try again. Move my scribble. Restart session. Ah, see, that was it. Man, I love when I do that. I feel so smart. I'm going to go Cisco, get logged in. No. Okay, there we are. We're on via switch 113, switch 1. Let's go to our pre-prepared configuration, switch 1. Oh, let's add these guys in there too. Shoop, shoop. Good. Good, and let the copy and paste start. I'm going to go on hyperspeed to some music since you've seen this a lot. All right, let me slow it down right here. I'm going to be careful as I paste these in to remain my to keep my remote access. I've got 2728, which are now down because that's the one I unplugged that goes over. This is just a spare that's not normally connected. I'll be able to paste those in no problem. But as soon as I paste it in on the port channel between switch one and switch two, oh, wait a sec, is that sweet? No, that I can't. Man, who QC'd these configuration? That's sweet, sweet uh, 113 lag. Is that what I did on the other one? No. I knew I wouldn't be that sloppy. So this would be uh, right there. Mirror that description. That's why that second pair of eyes is always helpful. All right, so um, I'm going to save this one. So I, I've pasted in 2728, which will set the native VLAN there. I'm going to save this one because as soon as I type in this, I'm probably going to lose access because it's going to flip that native VLAN. And again, same story as before. Let's go ahead and try it. Paste. Yep, and it didn't even get the output all the way back, echoing those back to me before it, it lost the connection. So now let's jump into that last switch. Nope, oh, timeout, we've lost connection. New session, 10.225.1.243. Port 23, and we're in. Resize that guy just right. There we go. Global config. Back to our pre-prepared configs. Delete, delete. 
Copy this from the old one, flip over here, paste that in there, and copy, paste, and copy, paste. Cool? Well, let's put this to music so that you can uh, see this one fly by. There you go. Pretty simple config, and now we're down to here. This is where I got to hang on. I, I want to sit and think about this for a second. This is going to my office where my management workstation is. And if I change that, I, I, don't, I don't even have my office switch in here. I, I, didn't, I didn't do my CBT office switch. So I'm going to save that one till last and just take on, hang on, where did I leave off? 26, yep. Just take on 27, which will be the spare 28 that goes to suite 110. Again, we're sitting here on this switch right now, switch 2, 28 shoots back here. This is the lag going between the two. We've lost connectivity to switch one, but my thought is once we've got all this in place, that connectivity should come back up. I hope. Let's give it a try. All right, cool. Oh, hang on, what's this? VLAN 30 VLAN was not created by user. What? Oh my goodness. Jeremy. Back out, paste that in there. This is again why we paste them in one piece at a time is because it's so easy to miss that stuff. All right, let's try that again. Paste. There we go. That's better. All right, I'm going to run back to the um, back of the office over here, and I'm going to reconnect port 28 to the switch, and let's see if we get some connectivity. All right, cool. We're plugged back in. Let's open up a command prompt and do some pings. <laughs> I was right. I love that. Feels so good. All right, 241. Oh, that's good, 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 good. Oh, it, you know, as many times as you do it, just when you drop connections like that, you're like, oh, man, really? So just seeing the ability to ping all those switches again from the command line is great, which means it was that native VLAN. It was, it was exactly like I described to you. Um, so good, good. We're, we're well on our way. Okay, this is, this is so good. Okay, now what I'm going to do. I don't know. Hang on. I got I to gotta kind of regroup. I got too excited. All right. Hang on. Let's look at the config. So I'm, I'm not going to change this one until all is well. Because, again, that's my lifeline. <laughs> lifeline? I'm like, I would have to leave my office if I mess that up. And I like being right here. Um, trust me. When you get here, when you're, when you're doing this, maybe you can relate. You're like, I don't want to get up and walk across the building to that switch and plug in a console cable and figure out why my USB adapter is not. Anyway, you, 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 you feel my pain. So I'm not going to mess with that one until the very end. Um, I'm going to go through, make sure all this config is good and save this. We've got our configurations on the switches and put them on ice. So let's go back to switch one and suite 10, get my new session. Cause they've all timed out. 10.225.1 to 240. That's sweet, uh, switch one in suite 110. And there. Get logged in, Cisco. Yeah, da, da. Good. I'm going to do a show run because I just want to go through and make sure it looks like I think it should look. Okay, we've got uh, VLAN database, just the VLANs we thought should be there. This, by the way, is the root bridge. That's the lowest spanning tree priority. You should assign a switch. Switch one, our, our uh, cat tools user is gone. We've got the right SNMP information. All right, name servers are adjusted. We've got, oh, I got a, that, that didn't take for some reason. That's fine. Um, we've got VLAN 20, 40, 20, 40, 20, 40. Whoa, yeah, that looks good. Oh, oh, hang on. Uh, what happened there? We've got a bunch of them that are missing that add 20. So 16 through, hang on, what happened? Switch 1, 15, 16 through 22. What? Well, that's crazy. Did I miss? Maybe I missed? No. You saw me. It's on video. We're going back and reviewing the video clip. Hang on. I'm just going to paste that in. Oh, hang on. What am I doing? Interface, range, GI, 16 through 22. Let's paste that guy in there. That's better. Huh. That's why we QC. All right. Going back. Hang on. There we go. Now we're looking good. Okay, so we've got the uh, router. That's the router on a stick. He's got all the right VLANs added, native VLAN 777. That's cool. And that, by the way, is the next video. We're going to get in and configure that router. That's the last one that uh, gets the VLANs routing, moving the IP addresses to the right um, interfaces. So we're going down. Looks good, good, good. Uh huh. That's our wireless access point. Got the right VLANs, native VLAN 10. 
meaning it's in the static VLAN for its IP address. I love clean configs. Doesn't this just look good to you? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Good port descriptions. It's a model config if I do say so myself. And Gigabit Ethernet 51. By the way, um, just to give you a sense of time, it is now 11.06 at night. So uh, I got here at 8.30. We're now two and a half hours into the configuration. Just to, I know it seems like, what do we do? We just change the tags on the WAPs, the phones, uh, and the switches. Why, why is that taking so long? It just does. Network config is a time warp. When you think it's going to be an hour, triple it or double it. At least that's what you tell your spouse because uh, you always will underestimate the time this takes. Okay, so um, back here, all the uplinks are tagged correctly. The port channels tagged correctly. We are good. I'm going to save. I'm going to save that configuration, knowing that we have the backup, the original. Should everything hit the fan, which it won't. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and verify the rest of the switches. Make sure they're all good. Save their configs. I'll come back to you, and that'll be the nugget. We'll go on high-speed music mode, right? through the whole thing the only things that I noticed is this guy 52 is our connection doesn't have a native VLAN 777 that's that's an error is that in our original config I go scroll down it is so it just must not have copy and pasted in there so I'm gonna do that uh -huh. interface GI 52 good now nothing is a part of VLAN 1 which is why the VLAN 1 link went down there's no other ports that are in there that's great um, so Show run interface GI52. Yeah, there we go. Good. Saving that config. Switch two, check. Now on to switch three. I reached the end of suite 113 switch one only thing I'm noticing is the port channel it looks like that one got cut off before the native VLAN went in there and I wonder if that's that's for both of them um, because uh, actually no the port channel hang on yeah the port channel is going to be blocked by spanning tree because this is the root bridge so active active this guy's blocked so it just cut off before it had a chance to type in there with the connectivity loss so we'll go in Interface port channel one and jam that guy in there. VLAN one went down. That's good. We'll save the config. Switch one in suite 113. Check. Last switch. Hold the phone right there. Uh, I'm spotting GI16 did not get, that's the, the WAP in this uh, building, did not get all the tagged VLANs. Did we miss that on our config? No, that is so weird. All right, let's copy that. Global config, interface GI16, paste. Good. Let's do that again. Right, this looks good. Now, one thing I'm noticing is the port channel 2, which is the lag that goes to my CBT Nuggets office, the one I showed you with the video camera later, earlier in the series. Um, notice this thing only has native VLAN 10. Now, this used to have all the tag VLANs, VLAN 100 and all that, that I had the ports a member of. Some of you might remember that from a couple Nuggets ago, right? Um, well, the reason those are gone now, they're no, it's no longer got a list of VLANs on there, is because we deleted the old VLANs. When you delete the old VLANs, it's going to naturally remove them from the interface. So all I've got left to my office is the native VLAN and I'm cool with that for now because <laughs> my office is me myself and I it has nothing to do with anybody and if I can just get on that management VLAN and not have to leave this spot I'm good I can fix my VLANs a little bit later so that's good that is the last switch and our configuration is valid problem 
internet access is still down. Take a look at this, being 8.8.8.8, good old, what? Oh, <laughs> that blew my mind for a second, because I'm seeing the little, you know, exclamation point saying, hey, internet down at the bottom. Um, remember, I'm on the management VLAN, and that's, that's still alive and well. That's the only VLAN that still exists, but I'll say for the rest of the office, uh, internet access is down. That was, that was funny, um, because uh, the VLANs are not configured on the router yet. That's the next nugget. So at this point, we have implemented the VLAN changes on the network switches. I know it took a little longer. It took me about an hour and a half or so. Uh, probably took you, I'm guessing, maybe 20 minutes or so by the time this thing edits down. Next step, router. For now, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.